Hello and welcome back to Crime and Justice. Oh dear, it's been so hot today. Hot. Sweaty, muggy. Horrible. But at least I, I know, because it's guaranteed, that this will not last long. This weather will not last long. Never does. Not in UK and definitely not up in Scotland. I heard someone say the other day, it was on another YouTube channel that I watched, about a caravan, a couple who live in a caravan home and travel around, and they'd been to Ireland, right? They was travelling around Ireland, and there's a guy who said, did you know there's seven types of rain? And I looked at him and I went, pardon? He said, yeah, there's seven types of rain. So let's stuck there looking at the sky. It's like, oh, he's lost it. And he went, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Because every day, sometime during a day in Northern Ireland or Southern Ireland or Ireland itself, it's going to rain. And it's a bit like that in Scotland. We have seven types of rain because somewhere along in the day, it's going to rain. <laughs> And I, I thought, that's so good, I have to, I'll have to remember that. <laughs> Seven types of rain. Anyway, so I hope you've all had a nice day. Um, thank you to those coming through on X now. Thank you for being here. I appreciate you all for being here and watching my videos, watching my lives. By watching my lives, you get to see, see what I've got to say first. Because everyone has, to, every, anyone else, if they don't come and join me on my live, anyone else who watches my videos, they have to wait till either 11 o'clock tonight, by the time I've done, uploaded it and everything, or about 12 o'clock tomorrow afternoon, lunchtime. Normally, in the next day, I upload it onto YouTube. Because by the time I finish on here, it's like normally gone 10 o'clock. And by the time I've downloaded it onto from my streaming app onto my tab laptop, I'm looking like 11 o'clock-ish. Depends on what time I finish in the evening. Depends on what time I get downloaded onto my laptop. And by then, I'm just too tired to sit there, upload it, fill it, type it all in, what I've got to type in, and then wait another, what, 15 minutes. Sometimes I don't have to wait that long. Sometimes it's only about seven minutes. But I still have to wait for it to upload. So I'd rather wait for the morning when I'm more alert and more alive. Anyway. So as, as my title says, Missing Teen Sebastian Rogers, who will cooperate? Right? Well, true to his word, Nick the Hack has done a video again. Well, he does two. He does two videos in a day. But the second one is like just an update of the first one. I'm learning that with him. I'm learning that. So, if I watch the first one, I don't bother watching the second one. <laughs> because he tends to repeat himself. And that's what happened last night when I was watching it. In the second one, he was just repeating himself over and over again. So I thought, no, we're not going to do that tonight. We're just going to watch the first one. And I agree with him in some points. I don't like how he keeps having a go at the YouTubers, the true crime YouTubers, but then he goes, but they're a great group of people. But you've just been slagging us off. You know what I mean? If it wasn't for us YouTubers, no one would have known about Sebastian because he would have died a death within a week. This case would have died a death 
within the week because within the week the police had finished the searches pulled back and we're looking at the investigation side and it took them nearly seven months investigation and still nothing off them nothing so as i know an investigation can take a while a long time especially when they don't have a body be it alive or unalive so it's all more sub uh what's it uh what's the name evidence you know what i mean where uh, i can't think of the word my brain's dead again perhaps someone might come up in my comments later and tell me anyway so uh, circumstantial that's it we haven't they they need a lot of circumstantial evidence to make to press any charges against anyone without the body they really do need a lot of circumstantial because they've got no dna and i think it's pretty pretty the law enforcement did a piss poor job at the beginning when they didn't take any fingerprints off the front door yes it's a key code one but taking fingerprints they may have found a set of fingerprints on there that hey, shouldn't have been there you know what i mean but they didn't do no fingerprinting chris even said that himself in one of the interviews because he said we sat down with them and we're throwing all these suggestions out at the police and we said what about the forensics of fingerprinting and they said no it's pointless doing that why if someone is has come in and took your child from your home then someone's obviously had to punch a code into that door to get in their fingerprints more likely would be on the top of all the other fingerprints right unless those wearing gloves But that would have just said, well, okay, whoever's come in has been wearing gloves. When we're dealing with someone who knows what they're doing. Right? Perhaps that's why Chris mentioned, why aren't you doing finger why can't you do fingerprints? Because he probably perhaps him or Katie knew there wouldn't be no fingerprints because it gonna be either Katie's fingerprints. They'd find and then Kate is always using that door in and out. Or is she? Because she said her car is always parked in the garage. So why would she be going in or out the front door? Sebastian would go and get the post. Sebastian would take the rubbish out. So why would her fingerprints be on the front door? If, she's, if she always goes in and out through the garage because of her car unless she just put her out by the front door and do a little bit of gardening round by those evergreens the bushes a bit of weeding maybe i don't know anyway so he's talking and it was brought to my attention i noticed it yesterday in a live that Dog, the bounty hunter has put all his weight on to Katie, the mother, because he reckons it's a a child uh, because a child custody uh, case. Because Seth was supposed to be getting custody of Sebastian at the end of the school year. Went broke up for the summer. But apparently Kate wasn't too keen on that idea. And Chris, Seth or Chris said themselves, those working on Katie to agree. Now, I thought, well, perhaps Katie did go out. What? And hide your son, yeah? 
But what's the point in that? Because she, how is she going to hide her son? When is she going to reproduce him? When is he going to turn up again? Right? When he's 16, 17, 18? In the middle of nowhere? Uh, a garage in the middle of nowhere? You know what I mean? So when would she then say, bring, bring her song out again? So that to me doesn't make sense. Alright, we know it's an, if it's a kidnapping, we know it's an inside job. Because if it was a kidnapping for... But then again, it may not be an inside job if it's a kidnapping because you do have children kidnapped because for other reasons. So they wouldn't necessarily put out a ransom. So it could be a kidnapping and it may not be an inside job. But it could also be like what I mentioned last night. Right? We know Sebastian was online at his dad's. His dad said he was always watching him when he was online. Right? He was never he never spoke to people online and all this lot. But what about when his dad wasn't there? And it's been known. The neighbour said one day, she said, Sebastian, come out. And she acknowledged Sebastian, said hello to him. And he said, yes, I'm just waiting for my dad. He's going to be home in about three minutes or whatever. Because he knew exactly what time his dad would get home. Right? So we know he was at home sometimes when he was at his dad's. So, could he have been talking to someone online then without his dad knowing? Could he have been saying, I've made a friend? We know he used to go for walkabouts because a resident in the other scheme, the housing block on the new construction site, said they used to see him walking around the area. So we know he used to go there, even though Chris said, no, he never walked around there. We went through there in the car, but he never walked. But we know that isn't true because of the residents said they used to see him walk in the area. They had not seen him that Monday though, but they had seen him before. So we know he used to go to there. So could he have made a friend? Right? Walking around. Aimless. Even his mum said he knew his way to Calder's. Calder's? He might, could he make a friend there? May not have been the right sort of friend, but he could have made a friend, which his parents didn't know about. Could he have arranged with this possible friend? Now, what I'm saying is all hypothetical, okay? It's just all hypothetical, allegedly, and my opinion. So, could he have arranged with someone to get him out of that house? Right? And that's why we see the two lodges coming from the house cutting across the backyard area, the common community area, and like, well, there's a car there, right? So, could you have got help to get out of that house and away? Perhaps he didn't like what was going on in the house. Chris was, oh my lord, there's a big spider which outside. Oh my lord, I hope it rains tonight, it'll wash that big spider, oh, that'll go, I'm going to sit the windows, hold on, because that big spider can get my windows, hold on. Oh. Right, you can stay out there, Mr. Spider. 
So one three loaders. Right, so could he have arranged for someone he met to help him leave the house? Possible. You know what I mean? Anything is possible. Katie and Chris may not have anything to do with this. It may all be down to Sebastian asking for help. But what he didn't realise probably is that the person he was asking for help was the wrong person to be asking. It's all hypothetical. We don't know. We don't know what's been done. But only Kate, Katie knows more. Kate is holding back on something and she won't talk. And in a way, I can't blame her because every time she does talk, everyone rips her to pieces. Right? But if I thought she was telling me the truth, telling the truth when she spoke, right, I would generally believe her. Genuinely. Right? I was believing her in that first interview we seen with the news people. But it was certain things as she did and said that got me that doesn't seem right. You know what I mean? And the fact that they never mentioned, mentioned Sebastian's name once. It's like they're trying to distance themselves from Sebastian. And so it was a bit iffy. And then I was noticing the red flags and I thought, yep, this is rehearsed. Right? And then when she mentioned that thud, if you go back over all the interviews they've done, Right? People have asked Chris about that thud and he will not answer. He will not answer anything about that thud. He was on the phone to Katie, so she must have heard Katie. He must have heard Katie calling in to Sebastian, but he won't even acknowledge it. He won't answer nothing on it. Now, that to me is weird. You want to protect your wife. Well, back her up then and tell us about the thud. But you won't. And is that one way of him throwing her under the bus? Don't know. But we really need Katie to start talking. And we need her to away, well away from Chris. We need her back up in Tennessee talking to FBI and someone up there without Chris being there, without Chris being in her ear, without Chris giving her the arm <coughs> to get her back on track, without little notes being passed from side to side maybe. You know what I mean? We need them to talk to her again because she's definitely holding back on something. And now she's gone mute. Mute. She isn't talking. She hasn't spoken for ages. And at one stage, I was getting worried because I thought, we haven't heard from her. We haven't seen her. Should someone do a welfare check on her? Right? But then there's an interview that Chris was on and you heard her in the background. So I thought, okay, she's still alive. Right? But now she's gone quiet again. And we haven't heard nothing of her. We've seen a po picture of her that when she was in church one day, a couple of months ago, right? Near the beginning of the summer holidays, something like that. So we're seeing that picture. And apart from her going to court and taking a YouTuber to court, we haven't heard of Katie. We haven't heard of her. We haven't seen her. And if she goes silent again to the point where no one sees her or hears of her again, we're going to go, I think we need a welfare check done on Katie. You know what I mean? Because even though I may not like what she says, I think she's holding back. 
and she's holding back on some critical information. Why? We don't know. Right, so we're going to watch this interview. This, not interview, this video of Nick the Hat. And it gives me. If anyone's been watching these videos or anyone's been watching the Magdalene Soto case, it gives me the Stefan Stearns vibes. Ooh! With, with that hat. The way he wears that hat. Right? So, I'm going to pull up this video and we're going to sit and listen to it. Some of you may not have seen it. If you if you only go on Twitter and you're never on YouTube, you may not may not have seen it. Right? Is it where is it? Which one is it? Um, I'm trying to find the right one. That was twenty hours ago. That was ten hours ago. So that's the recap one. So this is the one we want. Hold on, I'll set it all up for you. Uh, few tab, yeah. Let's get it large for you. And I'll take it back to the beginning, don't worry. I just want to take myself off here. Put myself down. No. Yeah, I'll do it like that. Oh, right, I'll put it like that. Put myself in the corner. I'm the Yorkie girl, I'm in the corner today. Right? So, let's get back, right back to the beginning. So we don't miss nothing. Oh, God's sake, what have I done? Go back. Go back. Oh, right, that's one. Let's get his home uh, in Tennessee on February. 25th, he was put to bed, tucked thin, bad choice of words. On the 26th, mother doesn't see him there, reported missing. I might have the day wrong. I just got off a long call, and there are a ton of dates on it, so I'm sorry. And I'm going to explain that call because it's a cool one. Um, so what we know is that there is a high chance, um, and I don't like to say it like that, but there really is a high chance that Sebastian is alive. Um, and that he is being taken care of, and that he's being kept, like, not beat or abused, but he is being taken care of, going to school. Um, there, there is a lot of, there's more pointing towards that than any uh, death. Right, so it states it, it's got, there's more sort of like evidence pointing to that he has been kidnapped, and that he's being taken care of and going to school. Well, if he was going to school, I think someone would be known by now. Unless it's in one of these institutions. Right? Because there's a lot of institutions for children with autism in Tennessee. And throughout the United States. So he could be in any of them. And as I said, not everyone... Not every state, county, whatever, knows about Sebastian being missing. They really don't. So, it could be in an institution somewhere. Which is good, thank God. Um, because if we had gotten into this and the first overwhelming consensus from the TBI, FBI, and the other agencies was that if they had said that we believe he's deceased that would have definitely changed a lot but we wouldn't have known that until after we got involved right they don't tell us that kind of stuff um but at the end of the day it's very likely very likely that he is alive and well and i want to emphasize that because you guys have to um be on the lookout now i know months ago they had asked people to start looking at their surveillance again and in the coming days once we have a more narrow area we're going to do the same thing and do that via press release to all the networks that will, will then blast it out. Um, there are certain regions that we want to be on the lookout because 
there, we want to bring Sebastian home before Christmas, and we want an answer before Christmas. Um, my, that might sound like a long, it sounds like a long time to you guys. It might not because it's been seven months. The longest I've been on a single case or story is sixty nine days. For like, I mean, consistent working on, not including investigative reports that took two or three years. Those are done one day here, one day next month. I'm talking about this, where we are all in until capture or in this case rescue um we want to find him before christmas we don't want to be here in 2025 doing it but we will be we don't want to be here in 2027 doing it but we will be we don't want to be here when i'm 60 but we will be and we won't though because let me tell you the companies there's a reason that the u.s government and um other agencies but mostly the u.s government they work a lot with um private contractors because they're, for example, their cases are backlogged. They don't have the time to go through the minute, like the minuscule tasks, the the boring stuff, the making sure X, Y, and Z. There's a, the small, annoying tasks, and then there are the complex tasks. And in this case, we're not on it for any complex tasks. We're not on it for any small tasks. Our job is independent, but it's an interesting one because today we had a conference call with Dog's team his uh, high-risk fugitive task force. And it's a, it's a force that consists of a lot of wild guys and girls, former, everything from former, every letter in the alphabet he has, uh, a former agent from that had just retired, fresh. So he's got some very good manpower. And then at night has a lot of technology, a lot of resources, a lot of lawyers, a lot of um, people that can call people. We have... For example, there'll be a call with, I don't know the governor's name in Tennessee, I'm sorry, but One World's attorney is going to speak with the governor out in Tennessee because One World's attorney is the former Pennsylvania attorney general, right? So that companies like this get involved. Right, for those coming in, we are watching the video that Nuclear Hat put out. Apparently, he's going to do daily videos, right? To keep us updated and whatever else. Right? Well, at the moment, they're just having talks, discussions. Neither Nick the Hat or Dog the Bounty Hunter are in Tennessee. Right? And you'll explain that in a minute. All because of the ability to make phone calls to get the higher ups, the governors of the states, the feds. I mean, the FBI is already on the case very, they are on it. They got on it on, and I know they announced that they've been on it for a while, but it was toward the end of August. And that's not a problem. It's just because they had no need to get involved, right? Private contractors come in when the case needs help, whether it be raising awareness, whether it be locating subjects, whether it be locating intelligence um thank you for the membership i have to like do shout outs down the road i'm gonna do it i get lost easily if i get off track but again a lot of the services that are offered are like the the truth serum stuff yeah there are territories that are that's allowed and u.s territories so the company that does that stuff like it's a uh crack house it's a literal operation and it's been done before for other people. Now, this is interesting because it's funny. This company that is essentially, they've worked trials. They do um, everything from, let me think of names that I can say that won't. Uh, huh. They have done a lot of rather newsworthy stuff. They have successfully gotten people into Me Too and out of Me Too, which is wild, right? So they helped the government get certain people into the Me Too situation and because they needed to, they, they were monsters and then they helped others get out of it, which is wild. They are able to do that kind of stuff um, because not that they have connects, but they have manpower, they have technology, they have money and they have time. And when you have those things, stuff gets done. And this is the first time I think I've been looking, this is the first time that people really know about the company. And that's for a reason. The only people that ever hire services, I could think of probably, I'd go to their follow, 
following. And those are the kind of people they have. I mean, it's wild. The Clinton Foundation, uh, they, uh, the Stallones of the world, uh, Miramax, uh, Warner Brothers, people that need answers that are way, like, you know, the, the higher ups and the companies that can't get it without hiring former intelligence uh, officers, not me, but like the company that owns the place, right? And that's why they're involved. And the, this isn't like we're competing with the law enforcement. We're not at all. So we spoke with TBI yesterday. Um, great call, conversation with Special Agent Simmons. He is in charge of the case for TBI. I'm sure you've seen his name, Bobby Simmons. Amazing man, very dedicated to the case. And he is thankful that we are here And it's not because we're bringing, it's not about the publicity. It's the fact that this company has opened up communication channels that in the coming days, let's put it like this, there will be five or 6,000 faxes, missing persons faxes sent to the need to know places. There will be automated phone calls urging people to call uh, certain, in certain areas. There will be a lot of unique uh, methods to try and zero in on where Sebastian is. It is more likely than not that the boy is alive and that he is well. He's not tortured or any of that. Um, And that's a good thing if he is alive. And I'm not, that's not a confirmation that he's alive. And we get to that because there is, is only one indicator that there is foul play. One official. And I don't care what the YouTubers say. There is one official indicator of foul play, and it's way too soon to really talk about that indicator. But when they clear that that indicator, then there might not be any foul play. Um, And a lot of the people that have been pointing fingers. Oh, so you just let something sleep. That law enforcement has been keeping quiet for, what, nearly seven months? That there is one indicator of foul play? Now, what could that be? Hmm. We'll wait to find out, because will it tell us eventually? Not today, does it? But will it tell us in the future? You guys pointed it at the wrong person, and it worked. Um, It worked, because let's put it like this. If Sebastian is alive, which is very high chance, very high chance, and after you review the material, you speak to the agents directly in, in, involved, you sp- it doesn't take a rocket scientist to understand that you need at least one indicator, okay? Something tiny. They did wild searches as far as when it came to searching the home of um, the parents. They did that very thoroughly. Now, this is where stuff got botched, and it was right after that. And this is where YouTube comes in. Um, YouTube, you guys quickly turned – opinion is amazing because we have the right to say whatever we want. It's not whatever. It's the U.S. But we have the freedom, freedom of speech. But freedom of speech does not protect you from the consequences of speaking freely, guys. It just doesn't, depending on the situation. Seven months ago, a little boy went missing. Within days, there was a suspect, but not from police, from YouTube. Now, that quickly hit like wildfire. And what happens? As the father is searching for his son, it's possible that that attention right there, that that whole spectacle, literally gave them that free way to execute that plan and keep Sebastian alive and well. Keep in mind, Sebastian does not know better. He doesn't, if he's in a home with a family member, like a somebody that might, of a distant family member, he doesn't know. If he's in the home with a nanny and they're like, yeah, no, your mom and your dad are coming. They said that you're going to be here. He doesn't know. He doesn't know better. And that's why whoever did this, you're getting some aggravated uh, set of circumstances added to your sentence. And it's never too late to turn yourself in. And the best way to do it is to show up at the local police station with little Sebastian and you hand them over to the police and then you explain yourself. You don't have to call everybody. You don't have to call the cops. You get in your car, 
and you drive to the local police station and you spill the tea. You tell them who told you to do what. You tell them what the plan was. You tell them why you got out of it. You tell them why you were scared to do it or why you were scared to call the cops. You tell them everything and they will most likely be lenient on you. Let me tell you, because they want to find this boy alive and well. They want him to graduate. They want him to have a life. They want him to live his life. They don't want it to be cut short out of some stupidity of somebody that's scared to call the cops because they think they're going to go to prison. No, it's not too late, but it will be too late very soon because this case is about to start costing a lot of money. This is where, I guess, another interesting factor comes in. When you have a private contractor that employs everybody from former AGs to former feds to experts, to body language experts, to testify at trials like the Kenneth JFK, <laughs> literally, there is somebody that is still at the firm, it's a, an immediate relative of the body language expert from JFK's trial. Like these guys hire those people, and that's why their clientele, have, there's literally, it just says, their retainer is $500,000, call us, and that's the minimum. But that's why they charge that, because you don't get that kind of service unless it's a, it's a big job, right? And you need a lot of money, unfortunately. When the FBI and the state here, and they heard two weeks ago, um, they were the company reached out to them two weeks ago before any of you guys even – you guys were always tweeting me to get involved, but before any of you guys knew I was actually going to tweet I'm looking for information. We were in talks with TBI. We were in talks with the FBI. We were in talks with our contacts in DC to see if we were going to step on toes. We wanted to make sure we weren't. And honestly, we were. Did he say they was in talks with the TBI and FBI a week or so before it was announced, before it came out this week? Did that come in coincide with the time FBI put the rewards out. Makes you think, doesn't it? Was that the time when FBI put that reward out? That they was in talks with this whatever organization. Oh what is not I'm going what get it and write the name down. Write the name down. I can't remember what they call it. Some at some. And I'm going to do a check into now, okay? Still a little bit skeptical to get involved because we're seven months late and this is a lifetime commitment. It's not something we can get in and leave. Our contracts don't work like that. They don't have an end date because this company guarantees an answer. So when they do that, that easily means that when they don't have an answer in two weeks, what do they do? Ramp up their search. Two weeks again? ramp up the search. I'm pretty sure the FBI and the TBI don't want to look like they are being um, like they don't have money or maybe that they need some money from a private contractor when the private contractors bring in more entities and more done. It's going to happen. So what's going to happen is the FBI is going to bolster their team. TBI is going to bolster their team. And we're going to have a lot of people looking for answers. Right now, we have received many tips. Your tips that you have sent us and the ones that you ask us to send straight to law enforcement, they don't go to the general inbox. They go to a specialized inbox at tbi.gov's website. It goes to everybody on the case. So that way the entire TBI doesn't get it. It goes to the people looking for Sebastian, everybody from Mr. Uh, Simmons, Special Agent Simmons, who is a godsend, a great guy, great law enforcement. He's on the case. He wants answers. He also understands that in cases like this, I, we had a talk about YouTube. Um, and that was kind of one of the center points of my conversation with um, Special Agent Simmons. It was about YouTube, guys. And he, too, was trying to grasp how the internet was able to twist a case that wasn't that twistable and turn it into something it wasn't. Um, that right there gave so much time to anybody that had bad intent because when we was watching the interviews they did right 
we noticed some red flags. Like, the words are, like, for instance, when Chris said the best thing uh, Sebastian ever done was to just disappear without leaving, to leave, disappear from the house without leaving a trace. The best thing. Really? And then we've got the mother going, um, in the first interview she ever did, she said, I went in and woke him up and he was gone. Hmm? He went, she, I went in and woke him up and he was gone. How do you wake someone up if they're not there? So that got us thinking. So we was only listening to their words. Right? Mainly the words. Occasionally, we'd see like the little elbow or the calf or the flick of the hand across the throat. As I like to say, finito, gone, whatever. Them little things, we're picking up on them little things. So yes, you wonder why we zeroed in on Chris and Katie. Because we are not privileged to get the information that you are getting off law enforcement and TBI and FBI. Right? We are not privileged to that. And as I've always said, when law enforcement stop talking to the public, right, stop updating us on anything, then people, YouTubers especially, will start speculating and making up their own theories. I've always said that. I saw it happen in the Summer Wells case. As soon as law enforcement stopped talking, that's when the YouTubers were coming out saying everything and anything. They was going right over the facts, the facts of the case. They wasn't looking at the facts of the case. They zeroed in on the mother and father, and that was it. For Sebastian, or if they wanted to, to interfere with custody, or if they wanted to get back at somebody for some kind of a business deal, that opened up the door. Because when he went missing, search crews started, and then YouTubers decided, let's name this guy as a suspect. What happens? Here we are seven months later, and now we will find Sebastian. We will find answers. But it's interesting because, like I tweeted earlier, I, I quoted a tweet. What was that? I've listened to this on two channels with people in chat who followed this case from the beginning. Well, that's what I've been doing. I followed it from, he went missing on the Monday night. I, I picked up on it on the Monday night. And on the Tuesday, I did a bit of research on it. And on the Wednesday, I went live. I've listened to this on two channels with people in chat who followed this case from the beginning. Anything this guy does, you know, is true. Just, just know it's true. He's all over YouTube. This guy is a complete con. Well, I'm not saying anything at the moment, SG, because I'm waiting to see, as I keep saying, I said yesterday, sh start showing us some proof that you are working on this case. Let's see the wheels in motion start, start up again. Right? Let's see searches happening. Let's see... Um, people being questioned again. You know what I mean? Let's see if this is all going to be anything like that or if it's just, like you say, like we, we've all got this suspicion that it is just a con. I don't think Dog the Bounty Hunter is a con because I really do believe he feels something for this little boy. But I don't know the snick the hat. So I'm just a bit dubious of anyone coming into a case this late into it and then sit, start going on alive and saying, us YouTubers caused all the problems. Right? No, we didn't. For the first week, we never knew anything about the parents. Right? 
never knew a thing about the parents. And then it was only when I started doing these interviews, after law enforcement said they were trying to scale back the search, they went on YouTube and started doing these interviews. And that's when we was watching them, and that's when we was picking up on these red flags. And we're thinking, if we're picking up on these, is law enforcement not picking up on this? Oh, uh, is that why? Because it does state in here that him and neither him or dog are in Tennessee at the moment. Right? Which they don't need to be if they've got this big organisation behind them. Right? And they're working with FBI and all that lot. They don't need to be. They just send their little cronies out. Little funky chick. Hello, ah. Hello, ah. However you say it. I'm probably say it wrong, hello. So that's probably why he can't be in Tennessee, yes. Yeah, I get that feeling, SG, I really do. But as I said, let's, I'll give him his due. I'm not going to put him down, because as I, right? Dog is the real deal. He was here for many years. Also, he will do what needs to be done. I don't know about this guy, Nick, but I'm waiting to see how he does. That's me, little funky chick. I don't know anything about this guy. I have checked his uh, YouTube channel. I can't get onto anything else. I've got onto his Twitter account. He's got a Facebook account. I can't get onto it because I can't get onto Facebook at the moment. I keep meaning to find the paperwork out and send it off. Email it then. Anyway, so... I'm just a bit apprehensive towards this guy. I'm not going full, fully on him because, mainly because of what he said about us YouTubers. I don't think he is with a big company. I don't think he is. I think that, what is it? Whatever it's called, at something, right? There was something said about him with that company, and I want to look into it. Well, Dog would know him, because he's an ex-con. Nick the Hat is an ex-con. And Dog's a big softie. He likes to give all these ex-cons who have changed their lives and everything a second chance. Right? So, we'll see if it's just BS, fully BS, won't we? Because apparently, they've got, well, what was it he said? There's one bit of evidence that can uh, prove, that shows foul play. Right? But if that piece of evidence is cleared, then there'll be no foul play. I'm thinking, hmm, okay. Okay, we'll see. Tweet from the Cavalcante coverage, and I thank YouTube for everybody's um, support and what a great community it was. I don't know what happened in the past few months. Shout out to Grizzly, uh, True Crime. You are still the top of my list. Many of you still are, I think. I have to go through. I'm yes. But I said this. But I've been saying for ages, to be honest with you, SJ, I've been saying Katie needs to talk. Right? She won't talk. She's gone mute. Mute. Not a word out of that. Right? And why is that? We don't know. Could it be because she knows that if every time she goes on a YouTube channel or anything... People are ripping into what she says, possibly. Or is it because Chris won't let her talk? Because Chris knows that she can slip up. Look like time she's doing that interview on Chronicles of Olivia, right? And she's saying about that morning, I got in my car and I drove around and I was up here and I was up there and I went round by the school and he was, and she stopped her sentence 
And as she stopped what she was saying, she put her hand across her throat as I say, finito, finished, what, gone, right? And then she's babbling on, and then all of a sudden you hear Chris go, <coughs> and then she's going, and, and, and she's using her fingers, and she's going, and, what, what? and we did a three-way phone call to get her back on track. We've seen her give her a little elbow. No, Jim, when he mentioned where Seth lived. Why would she do that? You know what I mean? Why didn't she want people to know where... We knew where Seth, Seth lived. We knew that. True, she owes us nothing. No, she doesn't. I agree there. She owes us nothing. But I'm just stuck on the fact that I think this is planned by Sebastian. I think this was planned by Sebastian. I really do now. I think he's met up with someone, made friends with someone. Been talk none of them owe anyone anything except to Sebastian. Ex exactly. If she's holding back anything, she should say so for her son. Not for us. Not for anyone else, but for her son. Right? Now, as I said, I'm, I'm seriously going down the route of he's met someone when he's been out on his little travel somewhere, when he's been down to Carnfields, when he's been around that other housing complex. Right? He's been online at his dad's when his dad's been at work. He's been talking, I reckon he was talking to someone. He met someone, and then he's just said, I don't, that's between her and God, true, but it's not fair on Sebastian. If he is, a, if he is alive, where is he? I think, if anything, and as I said, there's so many institutions around the USA. So, so many. Right? It could be in one of them. And as I've said before, not every state, not every county knows about Sebastian being missing. Well, I, I don't know. I've been I've been on this case from as I said the twenty sixth the twenty eighth of February. And I was going live every night on this case. I was also working on the Magdalene Soto case and little Elijah Vu. Right? He's still missing. I'm worried about KP. Could she be in a relation, uh, like a DV relationship? And that's why she's not saying anything? We don't know. We don't know anything. Everything we say is speculation, just uh, a theory, opinion. You know what I mean? So... I'm not a YouTuber, so I don't, I watch Mel, I watch like Pursuits, but I don't know their take on the case. And in this case, I am taking it much more personal because we're dealing with a child. We're not dealing with a manhunt. We're not dealing with um, a mass shooter. We're not dealing with just like a ton of other things. We're dealing with a child. And then when you guys point the finger, if we are right and that we pointed the right finger at the right person, cool. Yes. But Obviously, one of you guys are wrong, right? Because you have Team uh, Proud Feet, Proud Foot, but Proud Feet, plural. And then you have Team Seth. Where's Team Sebastian? Does he have one, guys? Does Sebastian have a team? Because I'd like to join that one. If not, welcome to Team Sebastian and F Team Seth and F Team. Uh... We like, well, like you said, 
SJKP can't get brought these things in all by herself. I also think she's more than capable of handling herself with her back. Oh, yeah. Yeah. But, saying that, right, it doesn't matter how good you are at handling yourself. If someone you are married to or someone you are in a relationship with puts you down constantly, right, puts you down constantly, right, then it doesn't matter whether she's a black belt in this or whatever because he hasn't physically touched her, he's mentally drained her, he's mentally got her down to zero, you know what I mean? So, I think what little funky chick is saying, SG, is that she's a black belt in some, some uh, martial arts, you know what I mean? But as I said, if you are mentally, if someone mentally goes at you day after day, snipes at you, gives you a little gig about this, your weight, your hair, your, you know what I mean? Oh, you put on a, a pound or two this week, haven't you, love? And things like that. It can mentally wear you down. He's got her into a position where it's, yes, sir, I'll do anything, sir, yes, sir. Right. So if it is if he has if it is that sort of relationship where it's been mental abuse, then you could be black belting ten sort of martial arts, it wouldn't matter. Because you're not black belt in your mind. You're black belt in your body but not in your mind. And it doesn't matter you know what I mean. So I think the from just her, the way she is around when Chris is there and the way she talks, it's so quiet and so, oh, I don't know, sort of thing. She's so, is that how she always talks? I'd like, I'd like to know that. Because I've heard her talking in the background when she's had a drink behind her. And it's totally different to what you hear when she's on a live. I was you in the forces, little funky chick. If that is the case, then yes, she needs to. And that's why I said she's got mute again. She's not talking. We haven't heard of her. Apart from when she went to court the other week, a couple of weeks back. We don't see or hear of her. We really don't. I understand I've gone on holiday. Is that true? I heard someone say that she'd gone on holiday. Both of them had gone on holiday. I don't know Joe, get out of your ass. <laughs> Sorry, don't know that case. Let's listen. Uh, proud feet. This isn't about them. This isn't. This is about their child, not proud foot stepdad, the guy. Child. It's not his kid. This is about Kate and Seth's child. And let me tell you something. 
the stuff you guys put them through is nothing compared to what's coming if they're lying to us. And that, I promise you, whatever you guys did to them, is like a, if all of that combined is nothing compared to what will come if we find out that there is an iota of information provided to us that is false. Oh, uh, you bet your bottom dollar there will be a public a court of public opinion frenzy. And you don't have to go to YouTube to find it because I promise you we'll have it on TMZ, the Daily Mail, ABC, World News. We will have it everywhere because that's where it belongs. We need to blast people like that. Don't go, SG. I can speed him up if you want. I tell you what, let's have a bit of fun with him, shall we? Let's put him on two speed. Let's see how he sounds on two speed. Ready? on YouTube for the world. I want the whole world to know about the monster that did this. But we don't know who the monster is yet. We just don't. And I'm not putting the whole blame on YouTube whatsoever. But I am saying, you guys are hurting people. I published stories on the ground. Nah, not good enough. Let's go a bit faster. How <laughs> much faster can I go? I can't go any faster than two speed. Oh my god. Oh god, I'm trying to get my video up again. Why won't you go back down? Keep going up. Um. Come on, this mouse is doing my head in. It'll only go to two. I'll go there. I'll speed it up just a That's little. That's why I rarely have any coverage on here, right? I don't go. I I know what they go through. Look at Cavalcante, the small farm. I always use that as an example because unless you go and visit the place, you won't understand what the heck you guys, and I keep saying you guys, you guys, what you two did to them, to her. The amount of hate, the amount of death threats. For what? For what? A widow who looks like Meredith Grey, but a shorter one going outside unarmed to fight a killer, and you guys are going to send her a death threat? Give me a break. And that's what we're dealing with here, guys. You don't know the damage that is done when your kid is missing and you blame it on the guy without even knowing, or you blame it on Kate. Don't blame it on Kate. Don't blame it on Seth. Don't blame it on anybody. This might be a heated uh, custody battle. You're damn right. But we don't know yet. And let me tell you again, I'm vicious. If they are lying, I don't think this is because that it just doesn't. I cannot make sense why a mother would hide her son over because, yes, I can understand if she got in the car with her son and left and drove and drove and drove and drove, jumped the car, then jumped on a, one of those buses that you have that go from state to state, county to county. Why? And found a nice little place in a little in a little township somewhere. Used different IDs, got different new names and all that law. Yeah, I could understand that. But for her to hide him, have him hidden by some with someone, no, that doesn't make sense. Because when is she going to bring him back out? When is she going to say, Look, he's Sebastian? You know what I mean? It's not going to work like that. So I don't think it's got any... I think this is down to Sebastian. I really do now. I think all that thought and everything was just made up. I don't think there was a thought. If there was a thought, it was maybe someone helping with the window from the outside maybe to get Sebastian out the window. So, that might have been the thud. But whenever anyone asks Chris about that thud, he won't talk, honey. He will not talk. He won't even say, yes, I was talking to Katie. I heard a shout through to Sebastian because she heard him in the room doing something and she, I heard a shout through. Time for you to go to sleep. But he won't even say that. So, it's just a bit... Do you, do you are curious about that thought now? Yep. If I can get the information on someone, I will. Like, I pulled up some old court cases of his from, I think it was 2016 or something. 
I've got them on my downloads. But I'm waiting for my uh, USB port thing. I've ordered a USB port that plugs into my laptop and then I've got another four connections I can plug into. Because at the moment my two that I've got, one's used up by my speaker, my mic, and one's used up by my mouse. Because it's cordless, so I have to have a little thing on the side pushed in. But that's why I'm thinking that food, right? Perhaps it was someone. He could have gone missing any time after 10 p.m. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. We'll see if his um, words, his actions match up with his words. Right? And to be honest with you, some people may not like him. I don't know him not to say I don't like him. If he's in this just for publicity, to build his numbers up, to get the clicks and the views and all that, like, then, Christ, I will go to town on him. Right? I'll dig, I will dig, I'll get anyone who can help me dig up any information on him. You know what I mean? And I'll rip him to bits. Because for someone to come in and do that on a missing child case, I think it's disgusting. But then again, I don't think we'd have to. I think a certain YouTuber would be able to get all that information. You know what I mean? And I'll be surprised if Grizzly True Crimes comes in on this case. She has done a video or two on this case, I think, but she hasn't followed it religiously in on her lives because she's got other cases she follows as well. And she puts a lot of time and effort into her cases. So I'll be surprised if she actually took this up on a daily thing. If anybody that we speak to lies, I'm not going to do a little YouTube video. It's going to be dog. That's where dog takes the baton because dog, he'll get the message out. That's what he does. And then he'll show up to that house and he will blare that. Listen, you guys want to see them get publicly shamed for real? The real people that did this, the real culprits, then that's what we are going to do. That, that's, the, that's the plan. By Christmas, we want to have a Christmas present for Sebastian. And that's going to be bringing him home and putting these monsters on so many news channels that people in Somalia know about them. They don't have YouTube in Somalia. I love YouTube. I love you guys. I really do. I'm not like, I'm disappointed very at the amount of like how crazy some of these creators are, right? Um, yeah, I appreciate that you guys sent me followers, but you can take them back if they're like you, because I don't want them. <laughs> like, I really don't. I don't care for followers. I only want real people that truly care about the cause that we are after. And in this, it's Sebastian. It's not about Seth. It's not about Kate. It is about them. It's about their child. I want to find them. And let me tell you something. If I find out one of them. Right. I'm subscribed to her, and I use a lot of her videos when I'm doing other cases that she's done. Like, at the moment, Maggie, Magdalene. So too, because she she gets all the videos and the paperwork. Right, I've got some paperwork. I've managed to get some. Right, and I will be doing a live on that soon. Right, going over his interviews again, and then going over some of the paperwork that I've got. But I'm trying to get together and. Mark it out on the map, his route that he took. She's done it already, but I want to do it myself. I don't want to take all her work, you know what I mean? I want to do something myself. So I'm working on that in the background at the moment. It's kind of funny. Yeah. Yeah. But as you said, I will take him, see what, see if his words match up with his actions. Yes, we shall see. Those two did something, I guarantee you I'm going to slap the hell out of them and then they're going to be all over the world news. 
we'll get that done. It's not going to take six months. It's not going to take a year. It's not going to take two years. Give us a couple of weeks. Give us a month and watch how fast stuff gets done. Um, just like they said last night on News Nation, the resources are indispensable and they're not one sided. They're not here to help Seth. No, they're not here to help anybody but Sebastian. And that's what, that's clear with law enforcement. That's why everything is transparent. Whatever, whatever Seth tells at night agents and dogs agents is immediately relayed to TDI, to the FBI. Digital footprint, another thing. Okay, so let me put this out there. Uh, at night has started a, an extraction of various electronic devices because they have consent from the owner, right? So we are going to have a digital footprint. And the technology that these guys have will be able to tell if it's a new phone, when he activated it, all the crap, everything that was deleted. And then we ask them about that. Not we, they, you know what I'm saying. And if it turns out to be something that is newsworthy, it comes out. But if it's not newsworthy, we wait two weeks. It's like a, it's like a something that's fermenting. You wait two weeks because it's going to turn into one, okay? Because if he lied, we'll say, okay, man, we understand. My first phone call is to Agent Simmons. My first phone, second phone call is the FBI. My third phone call is to the other agencies in charge. And we let them know. Again, guys, we aren't here to step on toes. We're here to find Sebastian. We don't work. Um, but yes, we have been brought in because Seth. Notice how he didn't say his first call would be Sumner County. <laughs> yeah. Well, I haven't got a, I haven't got a, a lawn at the moment, so I can if I keep digging, I might get down to the ground floor. Put it that way. <laughs> but yeah, but it's. But there's that Aubrey Cunningham as well. I've got a live set for her. I think tomorrow. I'm not. Sure. I've got it set as a live, but I might just do it as a video tomorrow. I'm not sure. But I've got a live set on the Aubrey Cunningham. Just an update on that case, just so that people don't forget her, right? Because she needs justice as well. But as far as I know, I haven't seen or found any new information on it. So we'll just be going over old information. Right, let's carry on. Uh, not we, at night. Because Seth was being, literally, he's, he's the main story. It's not, we're, coming in, we're not coming in to help Seth. We're coming in to find Sebastian and get the attention where it has to go. And when it's time to have attention on Seth, it'll be there. And when there's time to have attention on Katie, it'll be there. Time will tell if they'll both have good attention, if one of them will be known as a monster, or if they'll both go to prison. Time will tell. But right now, I can tell you something that is 100% as confirmed as it gets. The guy, Seth, has been cooperating more than any for, <laughs> anybody. Anybody. We, the company has literally, and, and TBI, FBI, they have, before at night got involved, they had done the same stuff, same test, um, not serum, talking about other stuff, um, uh, polygraphs. They had, they had done um, hypnosis. Uh, no, they didn't do hypnosis. They did polygraph. At night, it's going to do hypnosis. To, uh, that, again, it's what they do. They get answers. And if you're willing to pay that company to come and offer services, whoever the hell pays, they're going to do it if you want it. Hey, do you want us to give you the whatever hypnosis? Yeah, let's do it. Okay. Does it work? I don't know. <laughs> How would I know that works? You know, but they offer um, they do. So it's stuff like that. And at the end of the day, he is extremely cooperative. Um, people say, look at the, look at the body language on News Nation. Um, put yourself in his shoes. Seven months looking for your kid, being called the killer, being called the pedo, being called this, being called the monster. Meanwhile, you're the only one that's out there looking and you're the monster. You're the monster. Okay. Um, again, the rumors that are going around, he didn't hire a PI company. Uh, he did. Because that night, agency coordinated after they were retained to get the file and share it to make sure that they have everything that is there already. So they're not starting from scratch. When it comes down to it, maybe there still is a chance. Everybody's a suspect. He's not. Everybody is a suspect. Everybody is a suspect. Should we make a song? Everybody is a damn suspect. Kate, Seth, Chris. The only person that is cooperating completely and not taking drugs to do it is Seth. Okay. Now. Yeah, I guess you could go take a polygraph all Xanax out and call that cooperating. Sure, but that's not cooperation. And that's the kind of stuff, that's a fact. See, that's a different, the facts are crazier than the fiction that goes through. Um, on, 
<laughs> if you're going to cooperate, why are you getting yelled at and being told by other family members, why didn't you go with an attorney? See, that doesn't happen to Seth because Seth goes in willingly, right? And I didn't know anything about that Seth guy. I actually thought he was a piece of work until we read, not heard from him. I don't care. I don't give a shit what he says. I don't care. What, I'm sorry, Curse. Sorry. I don't care what he says. I don't care what Kate says. I don't care what Chris says. I care what the file says. I care what the evidence shows. And I care what we know. What, what we know. And what we know is he is the only one cooperating. By definition, none of you, none of you in this chat would ever submit to getting your phone and your electronics to that company. None of you. Because it pulls everything, every history in your browser that you deleted. So if you've ever watched. You can have my phone. Mike, Mike, give you a few eye, eyebrow raises, but I could be saying, if the police went through my phone, right, and then they went through my laptop, they would have me nailed for every murder, every assault, everything that has happened in within a five-mile radius of where I live, well, I say ten-mile radius or more of where I live. You know what I mean? Because that's all they were find. So you're welcome to have my phone. You know, all of that. But yeah, that's all there. So yeah, you'll submit to that. Let me find any of you guys. And if you are, drop your email in the comments and let's do it. It better be a phone that's at least five years old and do it. I, if you do that and you let us go through your phone and not find a crime, I'll give you a hundred bucks. Two hundred, a thousand. If I could get my phone to you, you can have my phone. You can keep my phone because my phone's that old. It's falling apart on me. Right? But there's no way of him getting my phone. Because you won't submit to it and you've got nothing to hide. Why is Seth submitting to it? Because he really is tired of the bullying and that's what it turned into. Kate. Where are you? Are you going to come and look for your kid? Chris, are you going to come and look? It's time for people to start asking those questions. Don't hide in your little house. We're coming for you. If you are responsible, you better. We have been asking those questions. We have. We have been asking. Chris and Katie, have you been searching? Yes, I've been saying. But, however, when... YouTuber was doing his searches down by uh, the RV park where they was last parked up. Law enforcement come round. Law enforcement there, there did not know about this case, did not know about this child. Right? And told him, you're welcome to search anywhere, anywhere you want. If you need our help, let us know, we will come. Right? And now, Kate said herself, very early in the case, the reason she was going back down to the car bank, the RV with Chris, is because Sebastian could be anywhere. Well, why didn't you pop into the local law enforcement and ask them if they knew about your missing, child, missing son? If not, why didn't you say, well, can I leave you a flyer to put up? You know what I mean? So your law enforcement officers can see this flyer in case they do see him. There's another state that this YouTuber went to and the police knew nothing about it. They do now. You know what I mean? So... Bet your bottom dollar save money for an attorney and you need a very good one if, because let me tell you if you are responsible which right now I'm not going to say that yeah it's her it's them because we don't know what we do know is that <laughs> Seth has cooperated completely people are saying their electronics were taken well let me tell you guys about how that went down is it, oh, is it already yeah. known about the whole no, and yeah. so again the cops go to the house they have a group interrogation where they talk to everybody a family that doesn't get along is interrogated together to tell the truth. Okay, that's where they first messed up, Somner County, which is why they're not even on our contact list, just like DeSoto County. Those little counties, <laughs> Somner County might be working with that Tuggle guy, which is Zimmerman. But anyway, guys, back on the topic. If there is nothing indicating that this person did it, you're going through a Facebook post. Oh, he said this. 
Facebook versus forensics. Facebook versus forensics. Again, guys, and the people that say, how do I know? How do you know? How do you know? Look at my track record on coverage since September of 2023 and look at yours. Every time we said 72 hours, it happened. We found out what, that Danello escaped the perimeter when, the day before, yeah. Um, what did we do with Big County, called all four? Yeah. Zimmerman chased him, state to state to state, without leaving the sofa? Yeah. So yeah, our connections aren't that good, but the FBI calls us for help all the time. I don't need to explain any more than that, but back to Sebastian. Again, guys. There isn't enough to say that Seth is... So FBI call you all the time. Okay. Yeah, right. I believe that. Oh, shit. I've just seen three pigs fly past my window. As much as I believe that see three pigs fly past my window, I believe what you just said. Yeah, right. Okay. Is, I guess, clear, per se, because they don't know what time the, the young man, the young boy disappeared. But when it comes down to it, his cell oh, fine. His car, fine. Unless the guy went out and got a 1965, like some kind of a crazy car with no electronics and ditched every single piece of surveillance, then he did it. But is he that smart? I'm not calling him stupid, but I mean, you guys call him stupid. So then let me ask you, is he that smart to do that? You think he went and bought all that? He bought an old car from before a certain year, got another phone, got rid of the other phone, all without being traced. He used his what? Credit card? Give me a break, guys. He's not a mastermind. He's not a mastermind. Not a mastermind. And you guys call him stupid all the time. There you go. So you think that a stupid guy pulled that off? He broke into the house? How? Have you seen him? I'm sorry. I'm not coming at your weight, Seth. But he didn't come through the damn window. I'll tell you right now. So then what? He came in the front door? Did you guys give it, give Sebastian out? Like, what is going on with you guys and that family? Whatever it is. Family. <laughs> What's going on? I don't know. But we will find out. Again, guys, this is going to be about rumor control. What we know right now is that this is where... And I'm, I agree with him on this. Seth is cooperating. Oh, yeah. I don't care what anybody else says. I agree with him. Some of the county I would not trust my little finger with. Right? If my cat went missing, I wouldn't trust some of the county to find it. Right? Because they failed from the beginning. They believed what Chris and Katie told them, that he left the house he just walked out that house, and that's what they went on. They went on as a runaway. The first day, he was a runaway. The second day, they uh, put him down as a missing, uh, missing child, right? Then on the third day, something happened. I don't know what, but it's like. Then I think that some of the video evidence was coming through. And they're seeing evidence on some of the videos. Not all the videos, because we know some of the videos were knocked out, weren't working. Right? And that was said near the beginning of the case that we, I heard that. So hearing off the mob crew now is just... Confirming what I heard at the very beginning of this case, that cameras were knocked out. So I can believe I will not be making uh, my first phone call to Sumner County. You know what, little funky chick? I woke up at three in the morning sometimes, right? And when I wake up, if I can't get back to sleep, I have to get up and I make myself a coffee. But I've also been known to go in my kitchen and start making a meal, a proper meal, chicken, roasties, vegetables, and all that lot. I really have at 3 or 4 a.m. in the morning. And I've sat there, ate the whole lot, cleaned up, then it's about 6 a.m. in the morning by the time I've done all that, 6, 6, 30, and I'm thinking, hmm, I really should get back to bed. So about 7 a.m. in the morning, I go back to bed for a few hours. Then I wake up again at 10, like I normally would. I get up again, have another cup of coffee, and then I sit there for two hours. And I don't do nothing. I just sit there with my cup of coffee, watching YouTube till about 12. I never watch normal TV. I only put YouTube on. YouTube or Netflix or Disney Plus or Prime Video. Don't watch normal TV. But I have, I've been known to do a, a, a proper full meal at 3 or 4 a.m. in the morning. Now, I must admit, now, if I'm hungry, like that, 
I'll just go and take out. Right, and I uh, see what's open. There's a 24-hour McDonald's or 24-hour Burger King. I'll order some of them. <laughs> Katie and Christopher have not been cooperating. We're going to be making contact. Um, well, not me, but I'm assuming maybe already made contact. And if they did, the guy knows. Um, so time will tell. The fact that I was given the green light to discuss Katie from the task force, not the feds, from the at night guys that are on it, means that they have had no luck with her. So, Katie, where are you? Please call 332-252-3636. We'll be coming to your house to ask you some questions. Not me, they. So, I mean, there's one of two ways you can do this, girl. Um, cooperate, don't cooperate. Good luck to that because she's not at the house. I've heard she's on holiday. I've heard they've both gone on holiday. Don't worry, too. I can't remember where I heard they've gone, but they've gone on holiday, apparently. So good luck to that. And even when they're not on holiday, they're not in the house. They're in the five wheeler, and we don't know where about in for, where they are now. But we'll track it. Someone's tracking them down again. They'll be found again. So I've got a little footrest now under my table. And it's so soft and comfy. So now my feet aren't like up on. I'm not sitting with my feet up on the t on on it on my toes sort of thing. I'm resting him on that. But every time, every so often, I have to move it over a little bit to get just right. Anyway, let's listen to what he says. You really don't care. We're here to find your son. We're going to find him. We're going to find out what happened. And not you, I'm sorry for coming at you like that. That was kind of rude. But if it is, <laughs> you've got no idea what's coming. And the same goes for Seth. Um, look, I'm, I don't trust him. I don't. You know why? Because I only trust Sebastian is missing. That's it. That's what I trust. I don't trust Seth. I don't trust Kate. Sounds I don't nice. trust uh, the Chris. But I'm not going to slam them and call them all guilty. But what I will do is say that he's cooperating. Those two, good luck getting them to, to cooperate. Where were they last night? No News Nation? Interesting. Why? Because they don't want to be on TV. You know why? Body language experts. And <laughs> the company at night had four renowned body language experts last night hoping that they would show. And they didn't. So let me tell you guys, we are on to a lot with these people. And the body language experts that we hire aren't these like uh, crazy people. They're the people that testify at R. Kelly's trial at at the trial of uh, Harvey Weinstein, at Trump's trial. Like, these are the best. We had lip readers, not we, that company. They're pretty. And honestly, by after this, maybe they should start hiring some of you guys, the ones that have been able to uh, find the truth and not go with the gossip. There's been so much gossip. It's been convoluted. How do you take a one-page website that hasn't changed in, like, eight months and turn it into eight months of content? How? One sentence a week? Right. I'll just stop it there, Minnie. I just want to do an update for those coming in on Twitter. Uh, we're looking at the video that... What's his name? Nick the Hat. Apparently, does is going to be doing an update every day. Right? But believe me, I will not be going live every day on his videos. I will not. Right? Um... I'll only go live if he actually says something that is worth knowing. So Nick the Hat is working with a company called At Night, and I'll find some information out on them. And Dog the Bounty Hunter is also working on this case. So Dog the Bounty Hunter has already zeroed in on Katie, but I must admit, I've been saying for weeks. It's Katie people need to talk to. She's the last one that was in that house. She's holding something back. Okay, she don't have to tell us. She don't have to tell no one. But for the sake of her son, this is a mother. If she knows anything for this, for her son's sake, let, let, let someone know. If she's in a domestic violence, a DV, relationship then just reach out to someone you can do it without your partner knowing you can get out of anything like that if you reach out you've got to make that first step we no one can do it for her and that is if she is in a dv relationship i think chris is very controlling 
I think his whole family is controlling. His mother and his stepfather are both controlling. Right? And I think Katie knows what Chris is like from when he was with... When he was going through that custody case and everything with Nina and still is. With Faith. She knows how he is with, with the law. He knows, she knows how her, his family works. So she could be in a position where she's been told, shut up, say nothing. So we just have to wait and see. Week, Sebastian is missing. The next day. He was 15 years old. He was last seen. The night before, his mother went to wake him up. Like, what do you do? It's one page. How much? You read it, you wait. There is no other lead. You do chase them, but not from out of state. And if you're in the state, you do it with respect. And you do it with blinders on. If you walk into this thing with a team, you're screwed from the outset. And that's why we came in with blinders on. Because we don't want to. Our team is very simple. Sebastian, um, that's it. It's not hard. There's no team Seth. There's no team Kate. No team Chris. Um, but let me tell you, there's going to be a cell block for people in this case very soon. There's going to be some of that. If That could be possible. But I should imagine, I'd like to hope that law enforcement and TBI have checked her family out. But then again, you've heard of, right, there was a, there's a case in the UK years back now of a young girl that was reported missing. She was found in her mother's, the, the uncle's house, in her uncle's house. Under, we have these, what we call divan beds, which is like a square block, yeah? And, but they're hollow underneath. A hollow underneath, but you just can't get into there unless you cut the sides, right? They found her under the bed itself in the divan part. This went on for, oh God, weeks. They was doing uh, marches, vigils, everything. And it came out that the mother knew about it. And was trying to get out of the her relationship with her husband, but couldn't. And before she knew it, the police were involved and everything else. So, but she got sent down. She's now out. She's now out of prison. She didn't get that. Our, our laws, our justice system stinks. Right? Just stinks. So... You could do a murder over there and do, what, five years? You really could. But if you say something out of place on a Twitter account or a post on Facebook or something like that, then you could get sent down for three years. Doesn't make sense, does it? Anyway, let's continue. How much more have we got? Not much longer. Not much longer. If Sebastian is harmed, this thing will blow up beyond belief. If he is alive, it'll still be big, but we will be, obviously, we want, everybody wants Sebastian home. That is the goal. And if it's too late to turn back because it's done, good luck because we're coming and we will find you. We will hunt you down and that's what we do. We catch killers, we catch fugitives, we catch escapees. I mean, yeah, I'm on YouTube, but it's called intelligence and gathering. The comments that we got there in Cavalcante, a lot of idiots that comment that are part of the case. I love commenters that are real, but then we have idiots that work with the killers, right? We have idiots that work with Joshua Zimmerman, right? That's how people get caught. So again, guys, if they did it, they're going to get found 100%. The pressure is up. And you know why it's up? Do you think the FBI and TBI, even though they're working not with, it's independent, but they are communicating, do you think they want to be beat by a dog? I'm not making it sound bad, but do you think they want to be beat by him as far as getting a credible lead? No. And when I say credible, in about two weeks, I hope the crowd folks don't go on vacation. Don't. Because that'll just be an interesting factor. And what's interesting is nobody has really touched base on the tide turning. Because yesterday, obviously, I mean, I have to watch some streams. Maybe somebody did. But guys, 
that was day one. The night before it didn't count. That was just like a little teaser. Day one was yesterday. Day two is today. Day three. Let me tell you, the schedule is full when it comes down to getting this out there, when it comes down to getting publicity out there. Not for a circus, for Sebastian, to make the pressure skyrocket, to make the FBI, and guess what? Not make, but the FBI is going to go to Sumner County and see their file and let them find out that they did nothing. Oh, boy, the fines that they're going to get hit with. There goes their budget, defunded. If you guys didn't do your job, you better start now because call the FBI. Actually, it's the same field office. If you call downstairs, I don't know what floor you're on, FBI Memphis, uh, on, I think it was June 20th, there was work done between us and FBI Memphis. Call down there and you ask them what happens when we get involved, when the public wants to know what happened and what's going on in DeSoto County. Um, you guys know DeSoto County, right? There is now four grand juries on that place. They're, they're about to shut that whole county down, lock them all up. That's what happens when you botch a case and the FBI looks stupid. They caught Zimmerman in Chicago. They looked stupid. So now, you know who's going to look stupid? A lot of people wearing orange in Tennessee for taking them out and bringing them out, whining and dining a killer. Nice job. But that's what we do. We hunt people and we search for answers. In this case, we're on a manhunt for information. We're on a manhunt for intelligence. We're working with some of the best people in the world when it comes to assets and what they can bring in. Again, guys, when we have an area that we think is a serious region of interest, and we're not going to be throwing, oh, this area, go here. Because when we have a region of interest, we are coming in heavy, heavy. And that means that we want to make sure that there is no leaving that region of interest until after it's surrounded, you know? So it's not going to be on X or YouTube right away, but probably 20 minutes after it's established. But let me tell you guys again, we are going to find out what happened. My message to the family members, reach out to us. If you already did and you lied, we're coming, we'll be back. We're not going anywhere. Literally guys, um, I'm, I might as well come over for Christmas with the dog and everybody because we're going to be stuck to the hip until your son is found I'm not leaving. So we're here. Um, we're not going anywhere, but if I find out that you lie, you're going to have a bigger problem than this whole thing, like the whole manhunt, because you misled the wrong agencies, and then you're really going to tick off a lot of like networks and people, both of you, the Proudfoots and Seth. That's why I am urging the Proudfoots to go on News Nation, go on and have a civil conversation. Let's go. On. I can arrange for Dr. Phil. I can arrange possibly for Dr. Phil, most likely for Dr. Phil. So why don't you guys, would you do that, Proudfoot? You're not getting paid a dollar. I'll tell you that right now. And if there is money, it's going to Sebastian. But if you agree, if you guys can get the proud foots to agree to go on Dr. Phil, I'll reach out and see if you would do a, like a little um, meeting with the guys and we'll film it. And let's have a little conversation because we can get him on Dr. Phil. I'm good friends with little Phil. So let's do that. Instead of going on, I know you guys are scared of News Nation. I'll take you to a doctor a therapist. That way you can talk it out. We'll have a civil conversation. I'm sure Seth will do it because he wants to find his son. And I'm not saying you don't, but show, some, show something. Show something that shows that you want to know where your kid is. Show something. Show me one receipt that you spent putting gas to go find your son, not in an RV. Show me receipts that show anything, anything that you've done other than buy stuff that has nothing to do with looking for your son. Find me one thing you've done to look for your son other than go on YouTube and look for videos. That's not looking for your son. That's looking to save yourself. It's looking to save your face. And guess what? The FBI watches YouTube like it's nothing. It's all AI now there. So it literally picks up every single word. It picks up all the comments, runs the IP addresses. So you're an idiot if you think uh, Kate and Chris, that you guys are incognito on these little uh, groups and comments. You're not uh, at all. Stay on YouTube. Keep fueling it because you're going to find your son like that. Hooray. Give me a break. Go out and look for your kid. If he's truly missing and you don't know where he is, I'd be out there looking. He's not even my kid. Hey, what are you doing? Going out on vacation? Give me a break. Brian Laundry. What are you doing? What? You know, this is like, what are you people doing? Did you copy paste the laundry playbook and try to fit Sebastian into it? You know, it's over now. Start looking for your son. Start cooperating. Start going on television. Don't say you don't want publicity. Get the hell out of here. Your kid's missing. He could be dead. You want publicity, you idiot. We need as much publicity as you can get right now. The world doesn't even really know your voice except some YouTube channels. Great work. Let's get on Dr. Phil. Get this thing solved. Let's go on News Nation. Let's go on CNN. You pick. We'll make it happen. Good morning, America. You want to go on? Let's go. The Today Show? Let's go. You want to do like the Jennifer Hudson show? I'll call Andy Lassner, good friend. Let's go. You pick. Let's go. We need answers. If you want to make it into like a celebrity thing, we'll put you on the celebrity shows. We don't want to do that. Cooperate, lady. Cooperate. I'm sorry for like pointing a finger, but it's fine to because you guys have been pointing fingers and I'm not saying she did it. I'm just saying cooperate. That's it. Look for your kid and cooperate. So then we know you didn't do it. Just like we are starting to understand that Seth is more, more likely than not the person people should be pointing fingers at. We don't know 100% yet. You know, we can't say that. But we can say he's cooperating. Where are they at? Where, Puerto Rico? Alaska? What hotel are you guys hanging out at? You, want to, you had a resort celebrating Sebastian's disappearance, you sickos. Who goes on vacation when their kid vanishes unless they know where he's at? 
give me a break. It's 2024, grow up and then go to hell. You know, that's honestly the best advice I can give you. This boy doesn't need to be victimized and abused. He doesn't know where he is. He trusts you and you're going to do that. You've got a special place waiting for you. If, and this isn't out to Kate, this is out to whoever did it. You have a special place for yourself in hell and in the prison, and it's going to be waiting for you. Now, again, my number, 332-252-3636. You can also email hx at at night dot agency. That's one of the leads, hx at at night dot agency. I know you watch YouTube, lady. Email, call. Don't make us call you. We have your number. We have your address. We have your husband's number. We have his mom's number. We have your cousin's numbers. We have your neighbor's numbers. We have your workplace numbers. We even have the homes that you installed Brinks at numbers, lady. This is a private intelligence agency. We're going to find your son and we're going to find him fast. We don't play games. It costs too much money to keep us out on the ground. We're not there yet. But when we get there, we get stuff done very quick. Again, your clientele, we know. I'm not saying they know anything, but guess what? When they start getting calls from feds talking about Brinks, Brinks is going to get a phone call saying, hey, Who'd you guys have installed my security system? Because the FBI is asking about her. Oh, yeah, you really want a woman that's un- that has the FBI knocking on doors and following your brinks? That'll be nice. I'm not trying to put you out there, but guess what? Seth has been out there long enough. The poor guy's out there searching, and everybody over here is calling him all of these names. Why don't you guys look at look, – I'm not even going to go there. We've seen the finances. We've seen the money spent by Seth. We've seen the, we've seen the stuff the authorities have, and authorities even spoke with us about him. And they, I'm not going to get into what else there is other than cooperate cooperate, cooperate. Giving a phone over is not cooperating. Taking drugs to go get a drug test or to go take a lie detector is not cooperating, okay? It's not. Submit to a drug test before you go in if you want to start playing that game because it's, it's ridiculous. And also, it's very interesting that the only, only person that was very angry about truth serum came from left field and not Seth. So guys, again, this is about Sebastian. This is about Sebastian. And I wanted to give you guys that little rant so that way Kate has an equal amount of Whatever the heck, far from equal because you guys, I mean, it's been done for seven months. But that, if you're going to say stuff about Seth, you say stuff about Kate because the stuff about her and her little man are a lot worse. Now, a man looking for a kid, guilty, guilty, guilty. Now, what if he went on vacation? And what if Kate and Chris were looking? Then would you guys have said, Kate and Chris, you guys killed him? You guys, no, you were not. You would have said, Seth, he left town in an RV. He did this. Oh my God, there's Sebastian. Shame on you. What? Are you picking on him because of how he looks? We aren't bullies on YouTube, but there are some. There are some. But overall, we aren't. We don't bully people. We don't do that. We unite. There are kids that come here for unity. And this is what it's about. Oh, we know there's bullies on YouTube. We know there is. And all it took was for one, well, two YouTubers to talk about Seth. And I said then, I thought to myself, they're going to turn people against Seth. You know what I mean? And they did. People started rethinking about Seth, about the money, the GoFund money. What he did with that money is none of our business. We don't question Katie and Chris, how they spend their money. So why should we question Seth on how he spent the money? Huh? Seth is the one who's been out there from day one. At one point, it was just him and two fellow... One was a... And he's been with him all the way through this. One is... Uh, a workmate, a colleague, and one was a young lad who who hooked up with Seth, I think, at the first vigil that they did. And they'd been with Seth all the way through. They had all the vigils with him, everything. I think the only person who's going to be out of place With Nick the Hat, who we don't really, I don't really know nothing about him. And this at night company and Dog the Bounty, who's coming in on this case, will be TikTok Tony. 
because now Seth won't be just listening to TikTok Tony. He'll be listening to Dog the Bounty Hunter. He'll be listening to what the other organisation has got to say and what this guy's got to say. So let's see how long, now they come in on the case, how long Seth, uh, TikTok Tony sticks around. Don't try to hijack a case for an exclusive. Do it if you have an actual lead. And the YouTubers that have, like, do it like the Grizzlies of the world. Oh my God, she's like an all-star. That is who you should be like, Grizzly. She is the one that does it correctly. She doesn't add shit. And, and I'm pretty sure Mel's the same way. I just have to double check on Sebastian stuff. But I don't think he adds stuff. Um, but again, Grizzly, go-to. Um, she's the go-to. And I hope she starts covering this. Grizzly, we can use you. We can really use you. And I'll put you in contact with other people, not me. And you can have their contact information to get information. So that way you are getting it from the horse's mouth as well. Stop getting it from these people. And you can get it from the media. You know why? Because from now on, the news is going to be in the know. Because the public needs to know what the hell is going on. But if you want it the day before it hits the CNNs, Grizzly, you've got it. We need you on the case because you're able to dissect stuff and we need your dissection for this. Um, and it would help. Put out everything you know about Seth. Put out everything you know about um, Kate and Christopher. Make it equal. Make it equal. That's all they're asking. And that's all that needs to I'm asking too because we need to set the record straight. There's a missing boy. The focus has shifted so far out of this universe that the boy disappeared twice. He vanished in February, he vanished again. And why? Because we, the facts have become convoluted, convoluted, beyond belief. We need some people like Grizzly back on here to cover this. Grizzly, please, I'm gonna tweet you. I'm gonna do all of that, I'm gonna send you a message. Cover it if you can, you'd be a lifesaver. I'll send you a ton that will get you up to speed. We need true people that are here for Sebastian, that are here to set the record straight, that are here to find a young boy, not start drama and get clicks. If it was, I don't get, I would, Jamie Santana, have at her. I had at her. I was calling her funny names because she was on a motorcycle, you know, like after that whole um, refarious thing. That was kind of funny. We had time to laugh at her. This isn't laughing matter, guys. The boy is not found. The boy is, the boy, God forbid the boy could be dead. This isn't a joke. This isn't Jamie Santana on a motorcycle. There are funny cases. There are cases we can poke fun at the idiots. A lot of them. But there just aren't any funny things in this case at all. No funny. Nothing funny. There's not one laughing matter about this case except the YouTubers that went that far and beyond. And again, guys, um, I'll be live every single day until we find Sebastian. Thank you guys for coming on. Don't feel obligated to like subscribe as a member because nothing exclusive about Sebastian is going to come out on any paid stuff. Um, I don't do that. So I do like the membership stuff will be more so, like I said a few times, it's going to get you guys videos that we've obtained from over the years and a lot of cool stuff that are cases that you guys like, but nothing about Sebastian exclusive because we don't do that. Um, this is something that has to be free because the public has the right to know what's going on. The public needs to know. The community needs to go back to bed. If there's a kidnapper out there, we have to catch him and we have to jail him before it's too late because he might hit again. He might take another child and we need to clear the name of all three parents if they didn't do anything. It's not that hard. You know why? If they all cooperate, it's not hard. But when we have to go through hoops and, and literally go through that kind of a, a little hoop, it's it's interesting, guys. So again, stay safe. You are. It's not man on. Um, stay vigilant. Be on the lookout in Tennessee. And as we get closer to uh, getting on that circle, that little region of interest, when we get it down to a mile, that's when I'm going to, if we get down to a mile, or not, not when, if, because that might not pan out. And then it goes on to the next one. We'll be here for 10 damn years. I don't care. Elizabeth Smart. I'll, I'll be greeting Sebastian in 10 years when he's 26. And I'm 41. My God. Yeah, that would be wild. But yeah, so again, guys, we're here to the end. Stay vigilant. If you see something, say something. Call tips into whoever the hell you want to call them in. We're not saying call us to get the extra money. No. If the tip goes to TBI, TBI tells us that that person led to it and they show us that they gave you guys the check, you're getting a second check. It's not about who you call. It's about calling it in. If you call us and that tip leads to it, you get two checks. You get the FBI or TBI check and you get the FBI check. Same way. So if you feel comfortable calling FBI and TBI, call them. But I'm going to remind you, just sometimes send it more than once. I'm not going to say they don't see everything because that's rude. But they are a little backlog, but keep sending tips as many as you keep, but make them relevant. Stop with the, I saw uh, Kate Bradford in this town. I saw Seth over here. Look at this Facebook post. I saw this. You watch the YouTube channel, man. Put the link to the channel if you say you saw something. And that's what they're getting. They're getting a lot of these people. And you guys have to understand, people that are older that don't know YouTube are sending tips that you guys tell them as if they, I, I, bless their heart. Because they'll call in and say, I, I just saw, for example, let's just make something. I saw Sebastian right now, yada, yada, yada. 
they leave out that they're watching. You nick the hat on YouTube. You know, that's a big deal. It just it changes the game. So again, guys, remember the audience that you're, you're working with. I'm not saying that they're done by any means, but they are different generations. They need to under, they don't, you know this. I don't have to explain it. I'm new here. You guys know this better than me. So stay safe, stay vigilant. Thank you guys for watching. And we're going to be here to the end. We will find out what happened. Right. So let's just get rid of him. So that's, he's a PR guard. Right, what has Tony done for Seth? Uh, nothing. He, I'll tell you something, I was watching a, a YouTuber when Chris, uh, Tony first come in on this case, right? And this YouTuber said, this case is going to go downhill. Zoom. Very fast. And what happened? This case went downhill. Because... Um, Tony was given some information by a, another YouTuber, which I take with a pinch of salt, right? And, um, but Tony, Tony didn't do any research on it. He didn't do any background checks on it, nothing. And he put this information out there and it wasn't true. And then he was blaming it all on this other YouTuber. And we thought, hold on, he gave you the information. You're the PR guy. Should you not have checked that information first before blabbing your mouth off on TikTok or wherever? You know what I mean? And I think it was on a TikTok channel he was doing. And then he's done other things like the think of tick but with a D. And everyone was going... D talk Tony, right? And he's trying to blame some people for um, hacking his account and all that. You, how could they hack his account? He was on a live. He was on a live. So he didn't. Ha he hasn't helped this case, and he's supposed to come in and. Get Seth, Katie, and Chris working together. Wasn't happening. We knew that wouldn't happen. Because deep down, Seth still has feelings for Katie. Right? He does. When he was talking about Sebastian once, and they was talking about how he met Katie and their wedding day, and all this, like, you could hear it in his voice. You could see it in his face. He's nearly in tears. So, TikTok Tony has done nothing for this case. Nothing. To the point where his one PR was asked, just told, look, pick up on another case because there's nothing coming through at the moment. Right, and then his other PR quit because she didn't like the fact that TikTok Tony was was coming in on the case. She didn't like the fact of his past record and the fact that they wanted this woman to come in on it to do the searching. And for no, you got what she's wanting money to fix her truck up to get up to Tennessee. No. Tony, if you want to go up here so badly, give her the money yourself. You know what I mean? And that was just a con to get money out of people again. That was a con. I don't care what anyone says, that was a con. And so Tony's gone very quiet. I've not heard anything about him on TikTok or anything lately. And even in that interview, I know it was only, it was a short interview part. It was like, wasn't the full interview we saw. Well, it was only a part of that interview. Uh, Tony just sat there like a dummy. Like this dummy in a chair. You know what I mean? He didn't say anything. 
and he came and what got me it was another one a good youtuber that contacted tony to get in touch with seth to see well to get seth to get in touch with this tony to see if he could help i bet that youtubers regretting doing it now because even he's backed off on this case he's backed off on it a lot of people backed off on this case and it's a shame because at the at the end of the day it's a lad a 15 year old autistic lad that has gone missing and while everyone's fighting between each other and having a dig at each other not one of them is mentioning sebastian you've got these channels who's having a go at seth you've got channels having a go at chris and katie Yes, I've had my go at Chris because I don't like the guy. I don't. Right? I picked some bones out on Katie, but only what she said. I haven't made nothing up. It's just all my opinions, right? Of what I've seen and heard her say. Right? But I have said if my if I had a bigger platform, right? If I had a bigger platform, then I would invite Katie on. Hold on. I would invite Katie on, but I wouldn't invite Chris on because I don't like the guy. So I think he's too controlling and whatever else. Oh, uh, I was reading up today. Elon Musk apparently is not buying YouTube. Shame. I was checking that today. I thought I'll check to see if that is true. And he isn't. It isn't true. I wish he would. Because he might relax the rules a bit. Like with the certain words we can use. And cannot use. You know what I mean? So. What do we do? Will Who will cooperate? We know Seth is. Apparently from what I can make out. From what he's saying. From what I can make out. That truth serum is it is done through a, a doctor at a hospital, right? And there'd be someone from the TBI or FBI there and all this lot, right? It'd be done properly. And only and only if they agreed to it and signed like a waiver, signed a form, giving permission to do it. Right. Well, apparently, Tony uh, Seth has said yes, he'll do it. So, from what I can make out, they're looking into it now to find somewhere, like one of these big hospitals, university hospitals and whatever, who would be willing to do this. So, and as I said, he's welcome to have my phone. My phone is more than five years old. It can keep my phone. I'll just buy a new one. <laughs> I've got to buy a new one anyway because mine is too old. It won't let me... Sometimes when someone calls me, it won't let me swipe up for me to answer it. I'm going to fucking swipe up. Swipe. So I'll have to let it ring off and then I have to phone them back. Because it won't let me swipe up. Or oh, sometimes it just does not ring. just does not ring through. The other week, I had my do, um, my son phone me, and he said, "These, uh, Dee, my daughter's been trying to phone you for the past few days." I said, "Well, my phone's been here. I'm always got my phone by me, right?" I said, "Well, she's just going straight to answer." I said, "There's no messages, nothing comes through." It's, I said, uh, "I'll phone her back now." So we come off the phone, I phoned her back. And he said, what well, my son did say to my daughter, he said, if I don't get through to her, to mum, I will go over there myself. Because he lives local. She lives down Glasgow way. It's like an hour and a half away. So she can't just nip in a car and come up and see where, what the hell I'm doing. Where my son lives, what, five minutes away in a car. 
so he can. And I thought, yeah, you'll be kicking my door in, wouldn't you, again, again, la, la. They come round one day, I'm getting ready to go out because I was going over to theirs. They came round unexpectedly because they was in the area. Luckily, I was partially dressed. I'm in the living room, drying my hair, didn't hear the door open, didn't hear them shout, they didn't even shout through, hello, mum, nothing. And all of a sudden, all I heard was him, heard him say, all right, mum, and turned around and he's standing in the living room door, nearly had a fucking heart attack. I swear to God, that child is out to kill me, I know he is, he's out to kill me. I hate to say it, I've got no life insurance. I've got a funeral plan. But I've got no life insurance. If I did, it would all go to my grandchildren anyway. Not to the kiddies. They've had their life. That would be the money for my grandchildren. Anyway, so let's just see what happens. Right? I will not be going live tomorrow on this unless they come out with some information, like credible information that they found something. But they're not going to even come out and say that, oh, well, we found this information out. Because they don't want any information. If they find some information, credible information, and they've got to get a lead off it. They're not going to come out and tell us on YouTube. They're not going to say nothing until the day itself, until they get Sebastian. So him saying, I'll do a daily update. Just tell us what. Oh, well, we've got some leads and we're just going to work on them. Okay, got some leads. Okay, thanks, fine. Okay. So unless they've got some credible information, like they've got, they've got a lead and they've been and they found Sebastian, then I will not be showing his videos daily. I will not. I'll be watching his videos. I might post them on my community wall or even share them on my Twitter account. X account, but I won't be doing what I'm doing here unless it got some actual credible information to talk about as in a lead to finding to finding something or something like that. So thank you all for being here with me tonight. It's been two hours and I appreciate you all being here. If you're watching on replay, please give this video a like. If you're not already subscribed, please go along and subscribe. This is a true crime channel. I cover lots of other cases. I am now just put a video out today on the uh, mass shooting in Georgia of Colt Gray, the 14-year-old, who's charged with the murder, the shooting and murder, unaliving of four people and wounding, I think it was eight, eight or nine others. And his father, Colin Gray, is also up on charges, which could see him being in prison for the rest of his life. Really could. Right, he's on four charges of aggravated or whatever, right, murder, which carry a sentence of 30 years each, maximum. So if he got the maximum for each charge, he was looking at, and all the other charges he's facing, he's looking at like 120 some years, 120, 130 some years. He's in prison for life. He's 54. So I've just put a video out today. Please go and watch that. I will share. I think I've shared. I don't know if I've shared it on X yet. I'll check. If I haven't shared it on X, I'll be putting it on X later for you. So thank you all for being here. Like I said, if you like what you hear and see, 
please consider subscribing it will help me out and give this video a like give it a share but most of all leave me a comment let me know your views what you think what do you think of this tick uh well, what am i saying tick um nick the hat what do you think of him as i said at the moment it's just words i like to see some action you know what i mean and he won't be doing young a bit it'll be dog if anything doing the book with he'll be sitting wherever he's sitting he won't come to tennessee i'll be surprised if he does anyway so i'm going to leave you all at that let me know what you think please 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 give this video a like if you want x give me a heart all right and i will see you all tomorrow until then stay safe